Unless you're a fringe player going up and down for developmental purposes or a veteran on his last legs, being placed on waivers is an absolute slap in the face for any NHL player, especially if you go unclaimed. If you aren't familiar with the waiver process, to put it simply, when a team wants to send down one of their players to the minors, they have to put that player on waivers. And if they do so, every team in the NHL can claim that player for virtually nothing. You basically have to risk losing a player for, for nothing. And the team at the bottom of the league has first dibs. And the team at the top, you guessed it, has last dibs. And if a team does decide to claim a player, they also claim full responsibility of their contract. Therefore, it is mind-blowing. If we ever see a star caliber player being put on waivers. Tony D'Angelo, he clears waivers. Now he's put on the taxi squad. Tony D'Angelo clearing waivers. Tony D'Angelo. Tony D'Angelo. Anthony D'Angelo. Even though Tony D'Angelo was hands down the best offensive defenseman in the 2014 NHL draft and had top five talent, 18 teams would pass on him. And just this week, Tony D'Angelo, a highly coveted, puck-moving, right-handed defenseman, would be placed on waivers. Even though he just inked a brand new deal, was 12th in Norris voting last season, and analytically is an offensive superstar. So, why? How could a player so good be tossed out so many times throughout his career? <sighs> oh boy. Where do we start? Back in 2014, D'Angelo in his draft year would put up an extremely impressive 71 points in 51 games. But most teams wouldn't even consider drafting him. And that is because of his antics. D'Angelo while in Sarnia of the OHL would be suspended twice for violating the harassment, abuse, and diversity policy. And one of these incidents would even be against his own teammate. And he would also receive a one game suspension for abusing an OHL ref. Now, I do feel like D'Angelo is a very competitive player and evidently has had severe lapses in his judgment, but the sheer quantity of these suspensions and issues is astounding. Flash forward to 2015. D'Angelo would dominate the entire league. Nearly two points per game with the Greyhounds and even took home CHL Defenseman of the Year. You could easily say at this point, he was the best defensive prospect in the world. And with that being said, many OHL staff members reported that dealing with D'Angelo was a non-stop gong show. Their words, not mine. The next season, D'Angelo would transition into the AHL in the same story. Domination! But because of ongoing locker room issues and conflicts, D'Angelo being one of the top prospects in the world would be unloaded on Arizona for a second round pick. Imagine if, you know, Quinn Hughes, Jamie Drysdale, Bowen Byram was just given away for a second. There would have to be some serious internal issues to get to this point. And after one season in Arizona, D'Angelo would get another suspension for abusing a ref. And one year later, basically to the day, Still being one of the brightest young defensemen in the league, D'Angelo would be traded again. This is no coincidence, but this time he was headed to the Big Apple, where he would develop into a legitimate offensive star on the blue line. 15 goals, 53 points in 68 games last season, 12th in Norris voting, objectively one of the best puck movers in the game. And this season after a rough start, D'Angelo started to cross a line in the dressing room once again. But this time, as quoted by Rangers management, they told Tony that he was on his last strike. If there's no more incidents, great, you're golden. But pull another stint. If we hear your name in a headline, you're done. You're done as a Ranger and you're getting sent down to the minors. Culture is an extremely important part in our game. If you have a weak link in the chain who is constantly disrupting the culture of a team, that is an issue, no matter how good they are. And even though D'Angelo knew he was on his last strike, I don't know if he thought that they were bluffing, but he would let his frustration get the best of him. And he took it out on goaltender Georgiev. Now, they didn't disclose exactly what happened, but we do know it took Keandre Miller to break it up. Now, I'm not going to confirm it was a fight by any means, 
but it seems like they had a heated argument after a loss that led to a scrap. And as a result, this was the last strike. D'Angelo would be put on waivers. Any team in the NHL could take our right shot Dynamo for nothing. Guess what? D'Angelo's track record was so strong, he went unclaimed. An unprecedented event in NHL history. I mean, this just goes to show how negative he can affect a dressing room. Every team in the NHL could use a player just like Tony D'Angelo. Oof. Not only that, the Rangers also made it clear that not only was he off the roster, but that was also D'Angelo's last game as a Ranger. And it's honestly a shame. A player that talented just can't stop being a cancer. Because after breaking out last season, I thought this was all going to be put in the past, but it goes to show why he was passed on and traded several times in his career. What do you guys think? Will D'Angelo ever stop with the off-ice antics and just play hockey? Comment down below. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. I have a goal of 50,000 subscribers and you would really make my day by helping me get there. From the hard, cold streets of Philly to the sun-kissed beaches of LA. After a shocking off-season trade, former Flyers captain Mike Richards has a new home a new team Let's go. Let's go. Come on. and a new goal. Mike Richards, one of the most underappreciated, underrated talents of the last two decades. Drafted in 2003, aka, you know, the best draft in NHL history, Richards would be stolen at pick number 24. But here's the thing, Richards is not an elite goal scorer. He's not an elite passer. He's not an elite skater. The best way to describe him is basically the embodiment of a first line grinder. His biggest trait was his heart. Richards is a great representation of the game of hockey because you knew every game he was gonna go out there, put his body on the line by blocking shots, making big hits, while also burying you on the score sheet purely from his determination to get to the net. Which is why he was one of the best on ice leaders in the entire league and why his teammates absolutely loved him. Not to mention he had back-to-back -back point per game seasons. He was huge in the 2010 Olympics. Yeah, that's me. My grandma was his teacher growing up. Two Stanley Cups that he was a massive part of. And he was one of the hardest players to play against for nearly a decade, which is why he was constantly in Selkie discussion. So at the age of 29, when a player like Richards should be hitting his prime, he would instead hit a brick wall and be shockingly placed on waivers, months after winning a Stanley Cup. So, what happened? After being shipped off to LA in a massive blockbuster deal, Richards would come in and was an instrumental part to the Kings 2011 Stanley Cup win. But, during these times we started hearing rumors that Mike Richards was abusing non-prescription drugs. In fact, he would even be arrested multiple times. And slowly, it is believed that his addiction only got worse. He was still a great hockey player, but he was regressing. And the crazy thing is, his teammates loved him and didn't even realize the underlying problems he was facing every day. In 2014, Richards and the Kings would win another Stanley Cup. But this is where things really got worse. At the age of 29, where his game should only be growing, Richards' off-ice issues got so bad he would be waived only months after winning a Stanley Cup. And previous LA Kings GM Dean Lombardi went to the extent to say that it was a tragedy. Nobody realized or even saw it coming. So Mike Richards would go from the embodiment of what makes hockey special to be kicked to the curve and waived for nothing. The next season Richards would try to make a comeback, but it was too late. And I will say there was some good from this as the LA Kings and some other teams even made it a point to provide more educational resources and staff members to prevent these sad stories. After going undrafted in 1998, Chris Kunitz would put his head down and get to work, as he would see an epic rise to stardom, as he would go on to dominate the NCAA, which would force him into an AHL roster spot, where he would seize the opportunity by becoming one of the top players in the AHL. And this is where it gets fascinating. The very next season, Kunitz would get cut from the roster and the Atlanta Thrashers would claim him. 
he would go to Atlanta, except he would play two games and have a total of five minutes of ice time in each of those games. So Atlanta wasn't feeling it and put him back on waivers for the second time. But guess what? After waving him weeks before, the Mighty Ducks would reclaim the player they just lost the waivers. Just a chaotic mess, and I'm sure a whirlwind of emotions for Kunitz. But here's the kicker, Kunitz would go from unwanted, claimed twice in the same season, and in the same season, he ended up being one of Anaheim's most valuable players. In a limited role, he got 41 points in 67 games. The next season, Kunitz would be a significant piece to the Ducks 2007 Stanley Cup win. All from a player who was waived twice. And I'm sure the Atlanta Thrashers management felt like idiots as they didn't even realize they claimed a star and they didn't even give him a chance. And as for the rest of the story, Kunitz would eventually be traded for who else but Ryan Whitney, the wit dog. He would join the Penguins and be the perfect line mate for Sidney Crosby. Three more cups in Pittsburgh, so four total. The man was the Team Canada savior in 2014. But anyways guys, has your team ever let a player go that became a stud somewhere else? Comment down below, I'd love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. See you guys later.